our last podcast got cut off when we were talking about the lysosomes. So this podcast will restart with our discussion about the lysosomes. And I want you to remember that the lysosomes were made by the Golgi. So we're going to write that down here. Remember the Golgi is our Italian friend who works in shipping. And the number one feature of the Golgi, or I'm sorry, the number one feature of the lysosome is that it contains the strong digestive enzymes. And because it contains these strong digestive enzymes, it kind of goes by two other names that you'll hear occasionally. Sometimes it's referred to as the cell stomach. And then we'll go over that to let you know how that's appropriate. And then some other places I've heard it referred to as the cell's uh, garbage dump. Let's try to spell that correctly. All right, and we're going to explain why that is when we discuss this picture over here. All right. If you look over here, you'll notice that you see this piece of food particle right here? This one's being engulfed by the cell in a process known as endocytosis. And this is a process that we'll learn about later in the chapter. Now, when the food uh, it moves in through endocytosis, it's wrapped in a big uh, membrane bubble. And these ones are called a vacuole. The only difference between a vesicle and a vacuole is size. Vacuoles are much bigger than a vesicle. And as you can oversee here, here's Mr. Golgi. It's producing these uh, vesicles that contain the digestive enzymes. And because it has digestive enzymes, these vesicles are called a lysosome. And remember, the word lys means to break. So these are digestive enzymes. They're going to break down the food. So as you can see here, the lysosome is, is fusing with the food vacuole, and it's beginning to digest this food particle. And then not all the food particles are going to be broken down, and they'll be excreted through another process called exocytosis, which is the opposite of endocytosis. All right. Now, if you look over here, see the word biomolecule right here? Biomolecule is basically another word that means food. So when the cell needs to take in carbohydrates or proteins or whatever, those will be the food particles. All right, so let's go back to this here. Destroy worn out organelles. Remember we talked about how it could be the cell's garbage dump? This could be a mitochondria or it could be a centriole. And what will happen is, is that this lysosome will break down those parts and the proteins that made up that centriole, for example, will be recycled to make new and better ones. All right, any questions over that? Now, a couple of things I do want to let you know is that lysosomes are also like a self-destruct mechanism. If this vesicle was to break open, or this lysosome was to break open, these digestive enzymes would begin to break down the cell. Uh, and you guys have all witnessed this. Have you ever seen a frog L or a frog's uh, egg turn into a tadpole, which will then turn into a frog? As that tadpole is growing legs and its tail begins to shorten, the reason that the tails begin to disappear is that the cells that make up the tail are being destroyed by having these lysosomes pop open inside of them. All right, our next organelle are vacuoles, which we just talked about when we're going over the, uh, the, the lysosomes. Remember, a vacuole is essentially a vesicle. It's just bigger. And plant cells have a rather, rather large central vacuole. And inside this vacuole, you're going to find water. It's basically a big, giant water balloon. And you're also going to find some other carbohydrates and other things uh, dissolved in here. But it's just a big reservoir. Now, what happens in a central vacuole on a plant is that when it's full, it pushes the cytoplasm out to the edge of the cell, and that helps make the plant cell stand up straight. We call that turgor pressure. And when the plant has a full central vacuole, it's uh, said to be turgid. We'll go over all these later in this chapter. All right. Now, when a plant, plant wilts, their central vacuoles are empty. All right. Other creatures who live in a freshwater environment have the problem of having water always, always moving in, and they need to pump it out. And so things like a paramecia, and when you looked at the pond water last week, you would have seen some of these guys floating around, hopefully. And as the water comes in, as you can see here, it's going to be pumping that water out. And that's called a contractile vacuole. It's contracting. 
Our next organelle on our list is Mr. Mitochondria, and we're going to go over him in more detail when we get to chapters 8 and 9. But the mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell because it's the place where you take glucose and you turn it into ATP, which the cell can use. Very, very important thing. Now, the, um, the mitochondria is kind of unique. It's, it's almost very prokaryotic-like in some forms. Uh, it does have a double membrane. And it's the inner membrane where the ATP is made. So as you can see here, see these little folds right here? They're called Christi. And this is where the ATP is made. They also have their own DNA. And they undergo a type of prokaryotic cell division. We'll talk about that in a later chapter. And here's the unique thing. Mitochondria are inherited from your mother. So what they can do is they can do studies to trace your heritage through your maternal line by only looking at your mitochondrial DNA. Mm -hmm. Our next organelle is very similar. It's the chloroplast. And in fact, chloroplast and mitochondria, they're cousins because they have a lot of features in common. All right, now the chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis. And during photosynthesis, the plant will capture light energy and use that energy to turn CO2 and water into glucose. And that's a process called photosynthesis. So let's go ahead and write that little note to ourselves. It is the site of photosynthesis. And we'll talk about that in another chapter. Now, just like you saw in uh, DNA, or I'm sorry, in mitochondria, is that these guys also have their own DNA. Right. Now, I want to point out a couple of things that are real important when it comes to plant cells. Okay, Plant cells have these little poker chips. These are called thylakoids. And this is where the green chlorophyll is found. It's the only thing in a plant that's green. So as you can see here, there's a lot of these in a plant. That's how their leaves can be, um, be so green. All right. Stack of thylakoids is called a granum. So you can see here there's, there's a number of stacks of granite in here. We also have the stroma. All right. So what's going to happen is we're going to learn about, uh, in photosynthesis, we're going to learn things called the light reactions and what some people call the dark reactions, but the uh, Calvin cycle is more appropriate. The stroma is the site of the Calvin cycle. And then the thylakoids is the site of what is called the light reactions. And I'm going to shorten reactions to reacts. All right, I'm just kind of setting stuff in your head so that when we get to this chapter, you're going to know a little bit more of the materials. All right, let's move on to our next slide. Oh, you know what? This is exactly where we want to stop. All right, so we'll pick up this on the next podcast.